What's happening folks? So I'm pretty excited about this one. I've got the truck all loaded up, got my bicycle rig on here, got all my hunting gear packed up, and I'm about to go chase one of the biggest and toughest animals that you can hunt in Texas. Let's go. Navigate to Adolph Tomei Jr. Park. Sure, Adolph Tomei Jr. County Park. Eight hours, 49 minutes. Holy. I'm driving through the night so that I can have a good camping spot in the morning and have most of the day ahead of me to scout and just to, to use my time as efficiently as possible. I got as far south as New Braunfels. Had to pull over, take a little snooze, get some coffee. <sighs> but <laughs> waking back up, time to get back on the road. <sighs> One day, perhaps, the left will realize. Well, I got about an hour left. It's been slow going, because I've been driving through about the thickest fog I've ever seen. It's crazy. I've got, I don't know, 50 yards of visibility. Well, I made it. I officially got all the way down here and I can't actually camp in the hunting area, but I'm at a park that's like right down the road. So I'm actually camping on the Arroyo Colorado River, basically where the river flows into the bay. So it's brackish water that theoretically has pretty good fishing. So I know this is a hunting trip, but I'll probably be doing some fishing too. But right now, time to set up camp. All right, well I got in, got my camp all set up. I've got my Kelty tent back here, little table set up back here. Got my Eno hammock and a light. You know, nice tidy little campsite, I'm all set up. Now I'm actually, this hunt is on a national wildlife refuge. So this is a drawn hunt. It's not like paying to hunt at some high fence ranch or you know, where it's guided. It's all do it yourself. And so I'm actually on the refuge, but I'm not on the hunting area. I'm on the opposite side of it. So tomorrow morning we'll have to basically go all the way around to the other side to hunt. And what's really interesting about this hunt, it's it, it's a national wildlife refuge, so there's a whole bunch of rules. It's really strict, um, including you can't hang stands, anything like that. And also, there are no um, vehicles allowed off-road. So you can park your truck, but no motorized vehicles are allowed off-road. Um, so basically, I need to hop on my bicycle and ride my bike in. So that'll be an interesting experience. But I think I've got it all set up, but I'm about to hop on my bike now and grab my binos and see if I can scout a little bit. All right, I've got just a tiny bit of time to scout before our hunter orientation meeting where they basically check everybody in, get all the boundaries established, all that stuff. So I got my bike here and I'm gonna hit the trail. Got my binos, see if I can see anything or find any sign. Basically just find a place for the very first hunt and then I'll just kind of go from there. So these are all nil guy tracks. Looks like they're coming in and out of this thick stuff. Don't know how fresh it is. But they've been here. Yeah, these are all tracks. Alright, this is nil guy poop. Pretty darn fresh. Bunch of tracks over here too. Big track right there. There's just so much wildlife out here. Unfortunately, this is not a whitetail hunt because I've seen so many whitetail tracks. But in an hour and a half of scouting, I've seen hog tracks, nail guy tracks, whitetail, and even cougar tracks. But I think I just found where I'm gonna hunt in the morning. So I found that one little spot of poop earlier. Something really weird and interesting about Nilgai is they actually tend to always crap in the same spot. So look what I just found. Big old, big old pile of poo. And it's, this is like a crossroad. It's like a five-way intersection right here. The tricky thing is I'm bow hunting 
and you know you can see 400 yards down this trail when I need a 20 yard shot but I think of everywhere I've seen in my limited scouting time this place looks pretty good but I gotta go I gotta get to this orientation so that was a quick but pretty successful scouting trip for as short as it was so I was about there about an hour and a half <laughs> I think I could have got my limit of doves in that time goodness they were all over the place but I'm about 30 minutes from the Mexican border right on the Gulf Coast so this is kind of where they all where all the doves winter anyway but on my way out I saw two whitetail unfortunately they're not on the list as I mentioned earlier uh, saw some armadillos saw tons of tracks of whitetail some nil guy um, pretty sure I saw puma tracks saw some raccoon tracks saw some coyote I think there's just a lot of wildlife in this park so I think I ended up in the Los Fresnos Christmas Parade. <laughs> I'm on the parade route and everybody's lined up. They hadn't closed the street yet, so everybody's just watching me. I prepared a simple dinner, just an easy mountain house meal tonight. I then checked all my gear and got ready for a good night's rest because tomorrow was going to be a long day. Day one of the hunt. I drove into the park hours before first light. I unhooked my bike, got all my gear ready to go, and then started heading out in the field. Two and a half or three miles out on my bike. Stashed the bike about a hundred yards that way. And now I'm in my blind. Now there's fresh Nilgai poop on the ground. Like right in front of me. So I know they're in the area. And then I'm trying my my secret weapon today. I have what may be the only Montana style Nilgai decoy. I had a buddy at a sign shop help me out. They're an antelope species, so they're very they're very visual, so it may pull them in. It may scare them away. It's kind of an untested strategy as far as I know. But it's worth trying. So it's it's a small bull. So it's kind of the st same strategy as putting out like a Jake decoy for turkeys. But I'm at a nice crossroads here. So now I just gotta sit and wait and watch. Forty-five minutes or so. I've seen a rabbit. I heard some bobwhite quail behind me, and I had a flock of sandhill cranes fly over. You don't see those much. So that was pretty cool. There's a thick fog rolling in. You make me feel like home. You turn around. I feel the breeze over. Well, I saw a big bull step across the path, kind of looked around, and then he kept going. He didn't see me, he didn't seem spooked, he was just headed the other way. I was going to get up and chase him, and then a, a white tail stepped out, a little spike stepped out right behind him. So I had to hold still because I didn't want to spook that spike and then spook the nil guy. But he's headed that way. I can keep sitting here, but considering I know there's one big bull, I think I'm better off chasing after him. So, I don't know. Maybe difficult catching up to him at this point, but I'm going to try it. Well, I thought I saw where that big bull went. And I just found some poop. He pooped right here. What's tricky is I can't just charge into the thick woods. He'll hear me for sure. So I'm going to keep going down this road. This little clear cut. See if there's a way to see through the trees or another crossing or something.
Well, it was a pretty good morning sit. I think in total I saw one no guy, seven whitetail, that one javelina, and I saw one of those blue indigo snakes going across the road. So, didn't get a shot at anything, didn't really have much in range except that javelina which got to like eight yards. <laughs> um, but it was a good sit, um, just for my first time out here. So, got the blind taken down, about to head out, but I just realized my bike has a flat tire. I did bring a spare inner tube, but unfortunately I left my tire pump at camp. So the inner tube doesn't really do any good without a way to inflate it. So it looks like I gotta walk this bike about two and a half miles out of here. Well, took a little break during the middle of the day. Did some bicycle maintenance. Got that front tire fixed and I filled it up with slime. So if it starts leaking again, hopefully that uh, tire slime will kind of fill up the fill up the leak so it at least leaks slower or doesn't leak as much. And I've got an extra bottle of that slime stuff with me in case I have a problem with the back tire and I have an extra inner tube just because with all this mesquite, it, it's probably gonna happen again. Also oiled up the chain. So it's good, it's so dusty out here that it gets all full and nasty. Um, so the bike's ready to go. I'm gonna try a little bit of a different area. The area I was in, I mean, it was cool to see that many critters, only one nil guy, lots of deer. Um, just cool to see that much stuff. But I think for a big animal like a nil guy, really the crucial resource that they're kind of missing is water. There wasn't really any water where I was hunting. So I'm going to go up closer to the lake, hoping that they're by the water. I had to stop the bike, because these are really rare. Check this out. It's a Texas tortoise. I don't know that I've ever actually seen one of those in the wild before in Texas. Pretty cool. Good excuse for a break anyway. All right, got at least another mile to go. Well, bad news folks, I got another flat. Not on the bike, the bike is fine. On the trailer. And I've already been working on this for a minute here. What's bad is that I used the whole can of slime fix of flat stuff. I think it just has so many holes in it this stuff, even this was going right through it. And then I was thinking maybe it didn't have enough pressure, tried manually inflating it with the little hand pump here. No joy. So, I'm at this awkward place where I'm two and a half miles off the road without a working tire. I'm considering just taking the trailer off and putting as much of this on my back and going the rest of the way. And then if I get something, that's obviously not going to work to get it out. I'll have to figure something else out. Hike it out one quarter at a time, I guess. But All right, I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to take the trailer off. Leave it here. Hunt. And I guess come back sometime tomorrow with inner tubes and all that stuff. Well... I'll be able to go faster now. Well, the area that I'm kind of stranded in actually looks pretty good. So that fresh poop is there. And then it looks like there's two or three trails that kind of all meet in this area. And it looks like this is kind of the edge of the woods before it filters out into that big open area. So I could sit like behind there, like behind those spiky things. And that would give me a good view of all this stuff and the wind's coming this way so it would be in my face. So 
So, slight change of plans. I backed it up just a little bit. I was sitting real close to that edge, 35 yards or so, which is perfect for a shot. You want it to be close like that, but you also need time to draw, time to get ready. So basically if the deer are coming right at me at 35 yards, it's gonna be really hard to get away with drawing back the bow. So I backed up a little bit. I'm on the outside corner, looking down kind of that roadway in two different directions. white-tailed doe I shot about a month ago. It's really good. That's a bummer. I thought this was gonna be a pretty good spot, but didn't see anything. Just birds. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and pack everything out. If I can get that trailer to come out tonight, I think it's preferred if it is just slowing me down majorly or I feel like I'm destroying it, I'll just leave it here and come get it tomorrow. I got back on my bike and went to where I left the trailer. I managed to hook it up and walk the bike and the trailer out that evening without destroying it. Once again, the next morning was an early start. I drove into the park, unloaded my bike, and headed out to the trail where I had seen that big bull mill guy the morning before. I set my pop-up blind with a great view down either side of the cutaway, ready for that big bull nil guy to step out at any moment. Hopefully, he would come. Much like the day before, I saw plenty of white-tailed deer, feeding contently, paying no mind to my presence. But I saw no sign of the big gray devil horses that I was after. Maybe it was the full moon that night, keeping them at bay. Well, it was cool to see that deer come out and grab a bite to eat this morning. Uh, just watch that deer for a little bit. It's about... 7.45 right now. I could just kind of sit here really all day on the chance that a nail guy happens to walk by. But I don't know. It's not, there's a lot of sign of them, but it's so tough to predict where they're going to be. They're very mobile. So I think I need to get a little bit more aggressive move to a different area, pull out the binos, and just see if I can spot one. Kind of move, glass, move, glass, move, glass, till I see one, and then try to slowly move in on it. A little bit more western style hunting. Good tortilla. Screen that goes on my mic, so please bear with the wind noise. So, this is an area I was interested in checking out just because it's right where all this thick mesquite behind me meets what used to be basically an old salt, salt marsh, um, just kind of a brackish water wetland area. Now, every salt marsh I've seen on the map has since been dried up, but I've just been checking them out one by one just because there needs to be a water source around here. It's so dry that I feel like all the animals need to be finding a water source. So I was starting to look and I noticed a lot of the grass is pretty well grazed. Which is a good sign. It means whitetail and nilgai are in here eating it. And then I saw a whole bunch of nilgai tracks. And then a giant dung pile. Like I said earlier, 
earlier areas where they poop in it's basically they do their business kind of in the same place with all the sign around me including fresh tracks fresh dung and freshly grazed grass it looked like a good spot and then i found the water hole i was after it looked like a great spot for a ground blind except one problem the nine foot alligator sitting there guarding the place Considering I don't want to be gator food, and I really didn't want to be processed later into gator turds, I think I better find another place to sit. This area still looks pretty good, I just can't sit right by the water hole. Well after trying pretty darn hard for, I guess a day and a half, uh, looking for Neil Guy at one end of the place, I went ahead and moved up to the other side. There's a bunch of people hunting on this property, on either end, but nobody really in the middle, and that's where the woods are the thickest. So. It's going to be a little bit of a challenge to get back there. I think I can get the bike back there, but not the cart. But I think I've got a good shot because it's thick woods back there. And then across the road is actually a neighboring property that looks like it's all agricultural. It looks like sorghum or something growing in those fields. And there's a whole bunch of places in the fence where you can see animals are crossing back and forth. So I'm thinking these thick woods on the other side might be where they're bedded down and then at night they're going over to eat in those fields so I don't know it's a, it's a good thought at least I'm gonna load up and try my luck over there I've already screwed this one up as soon as I came out of the woods on my bike I came out and there were three bull nilgai three huge bulls standing out in the middle of this field. Now they were seven, eight hundred yards away from me. Maybe six hundred yards. They were they were really far. But they saw me come out of the out of the woods. And basically as soon as I saw them I dumped the bike over, tried to get low in the brush. But it was too late. They took off running. Dang. They're huge. <laughs> I'm so used to hunting whitetail, seeing something like that. They're they're the size of an elk for sure, maybe bigger. But yep, they took off running, so I don't know if they'll be back. Probably not. I don't see any more out there. I think it was just those three. Man, I wish I didn't come tearing out of the woods like that. I guess I was so used to not seeing anything that I was just moving pretty quick and the second there was something there, it was gone. Well, they were out in this field grazing, so I wonder if this field is a good place to set up on. The trouble is it's huge. It's about 800 yards across and about a kilometer long. But, I mean, I can see them out there. It also means they can see me pretty well. Well, with less than an hour of light left, and after my experience in that big field, I think really the only thing I can do is just to grab my bow and just walk these trails really slowly. Uh, probably just walking with the wind in my face. Hopefully I'll see something. What I learned from that last experience is, you know, getting out where you can see them a long ways isn't really an advantage because they can see you long before you'll get a shot opportunity. So unfortunately that means my most likely chance of success is going to be an ambush in the woods. But these woods are so thick and so huge. Who knows exactly where they'll be walking so the chances are pretty low of getting a shot, but if I get a shot, luckily it'll most likely be in range. So that's what I'm gonna do. The trick is also not getting lost, because it's all mesquite trees that all look the same. So I'm just gonna pick one trail and stick to it. Well, I stalked around in the woods for about 45 minutes or so, and it's dark now But I think to say the least I got my butt kicked today. I didn't have any flat tires So that was a positive compared to yesterday, but Whew man 
This is tough. This is real tough. Well, I just got back to the truck and got my bike loaded up. And I think I'm gonna head out, grab some dinner, get back to camp. Maybe do some fishing if I still have some energy left. We'll see. Whew. But I need to look at a map and find out kind of a back way in. I can probably get on my bike and find a back road to get into where those bulls were. Because this way, coming through all that thick stuff, it just seems like it's too easy to spook them. I need to find another way in. But, whew, definitely worked hard today. It was good. It was tough, but it was good. But, anyway, time to head back to camp. All right, day three, hiking in by moonlight. I'm gonna be not too far from where I saw those bulls yesterday. Unfortunately, I don't think I can get the bike back here, so I'm just hiking in. But I got about two miles to go, and I'm on a, basically a game trail right now. And there's starting to be just a little peak of light behind me. So I need to hurry. But I'm not too bad on time. But I'm walking through this open area so that ideally I'll be back in the woods by the time it's full light and I can look and see all the way across this open area. It'll be a good place to spot from. I just saw a group of about 10 or 12 nil guy. It looked like mostly bulls running across this field. They're about 250 yards from me. I don't think they saw me. They ran basically from south to north. The wind's from the east. So they weren't downwind to me originally, but they kind of are now in the direction they went. So I'm gonna see if I can circle wide around and hopefully they're just in these trees. Well, so far, a pretty crazy high and low to the day. I watched where those bulls went in and they had been watching some cows. And I actually saw them come in here around these trees behind me. And I was glassing them. And I actually watched them bed down. And they were about 100 yards away. I managed to close the distance to get to this tree right here. But they were out in this meadow behind me. And so really, I was at the last piece of cover. And I was 66 yards no, 65 yards from the first one and 79 from the second one. And I stood here for 10 minutes waiting for them to put their heads down. They never did. They just kept their heads up looking around. And then finally when they were looking the other way, I realized, well, this is as close as I'm going to get. So I stepped, I drew, stepped out. And when I did, those two immediately jumped up and ran. But there was another one that I guess was bedded down right behind the second one that stood up and stared at me. And I thought she was at about 70, 75, and my last pin is 60. So I tried to hold over, <clears throat> set one off, landed in the ground right in front of her. So I think she was more like 80, and I was thinking she was at 70. So I was already at full draw when she stepped out. But at least I saw some. At least I got to shoot my bow. But this is tough, tough hunting. But it's early in the day, so there's still a chance to maybe get back on those cows again or maybe see some more. just so I can get a picture of it. Well, I saw two bulls way out there. They were just kind of running around in circles. One of them was 
one's really big. The other one was decent sized. But the closest they got to me was about 250. If I had a big rifle, I would have had a shot. But I think I've said that a lot of times. But they ran around for 10 minutes and then they ended up going into the trees that are probably over a mile from me. It's crazy just in these flat open spots that you can actually see that far. So I know this wasn't the typical hunting adventure video where you, you know, see some guy traveling to some cool area, get up in the stand, see some beautiful trophy animal, take a good shot, bump fist with his buddies, celebrate. It's not all about the shot. The trophies are nice, the shot footage is nice, but if you've followed my channel for a while, you know that I, I think the adventure is much more important. And yeah, I love taking a good shot, and I love having horns to put on the wall, and good meat to put in the freezer. But to me, it's all about the adventure, and this has definitely been a very good adventure. Lots of new experiences, lots of lessons learned, some the fun way, some the hard way. But it's been good. It's been good. Until next time, stay safe, be free, and never stop seeking adventure.